What is going on everybody on YouTube? This is Big Shy. So today we're going to start a new series for new players. If you're new to Minecraft, this is going to be the series for you. So you launch up Minecraft and this is Java Edition. There is also Bedrock Edition and other editions, but I am going to be doing this in Java being as I own Java. So you open up Minecraft, you get brought to the main menu here. So you got the single player, multiplayer, realms, your options, and then quit. Single player is yourself, multiplayer you can join servers, and Minecraft Realms is a server based within Minecraft where you can have up to 10 players join and you don't have to worry about it. So we're just going to do a new, like a new single world if we're just playing by ourselves. So we hit single player and this will show like all your saved worlds that I personally have as of right now. You have all these other options down here, but as of right now, I only got a couple available. Now, if we went like that, then we could edit a world. We could delete it, redo it, or play on that selected world. You can also hit this little play button, which is shown right here. So let's create a new world. You hit create new world, and it has a default name of new world. So we will, what do we want to name this? We will name this uh, we'll name it something like this and you can choose whatever you want of course now your game mode survival as it says right here for resources crafting gain levels health and hunger you click this you can go to hardcore which you only get one life and if you die that's it you can get creative where you get given everything and you can do anything without anything so we'll go survival which is what most people will do and you can hit create new world here if you'd like and then do that. However, you may want to take a look at this more world option button. Now if you find a seed online or something that really interests you, you can generate it right here and put that in and that will load your world. Now generating structures, like it says right here, villages, dungeons, a bunch of other different structures, which is very good. You may want to leave that on. World type, default. You may want to leave that as is if you're just going to start, but you can also customize this into different types of worlds. Allowing cheats would, will allow you with this typing in certain commands like it shows right here. We may want that on or may want that off. I'm going to turn it on because I always do just in case. Now if you're just starting out with this bonus chest, you may want that on. It gives you a few things at the beginning of the world that will be very helpful. So, so now all that's done, you can click on done, or you can just click on create new world. I usually click on done just to make sure that I have created everything that I want to create for this world. Hit done. And now we're going to create a brand new world and let it load up. It may or may not take some time depending on what the world generation is going to be. Okay, so now we're in game, and every time you log into a game, your spawn is going to be different, and you can set your spawn with a bed, and we will get into that at a later at a later time. Now, one of the main things that you need to know in Minecraft is that the first thing you do is you find trees. Trees are going to be your primary source, at least early game, for getting resources. And we we actually have quite the decent world here. Or decent spawn anyway I should say so you're gonna hold right click on any block and you can break any block with your fists certain blocks require certain tools and we will get into that in a little while that may or may not be in this episode and then you can see in the top right hand corner it shows you recipes so let us take all this wood down I'm just gonna hold right click sorry left click with that and then I broke some grass that gives us some seeds that we could possibly use <coughs> so now you got a bunch of leaves you can punch the leaves if you'd like to you can possibly get sticks from that and this is minecraft 114.4 so now you want to press E this will open your inventory now you can take these oak logs and you can do many things with them let's take one let's put it in the crafting recipe that gives us four planks. You can take these four planks, put it right back in, and now you got a crafting table. 
Now if you put down this crafting table, you can make more things. Now this right here is something I would recommend everybody use, especially if you're just starting out. This shows you everything you can create with the stuff that you have in your inventory. The ones with the white box around them show you what you can make as of right now. The ones with the red, you have to make other things out of this in order to make that. So I recommend hitting this little section up here. Make sure it's a green check mark. This will show you everything you are able to make. So let us take one more oak log. And there are other types of logs as I will show you here very shortly. Now you can take these oak planks, put them back, and you can get sticks out of oak planks. Sticks are very useful. Now we will make a couple more of these oak logs and let us go like this and we can make a pickaxe. Now this is a wooden pickaxe. Your wooden tools are going to be some of your most basic tools when you first start out in the game. Now we also want to have something to protect ourselves. So just beginning making a wooden sword, these three tools it's basically what you kind of need to defend yourself. However, this tool is also useful, as I will show you here. So now you have these four tools on your hotbar, and as you can see in the upper right hand corner, more recipes. So, you can take the axe, the wooden axe, any type of axe can break any wooden material. The crafting table is made with wood, so it can break down wood easier. And now we just got a sapling. All trees, once the leaves decay and degrade, have a small chance of dropping a sapling. And if you wanted to grow another tree, you can just replant them by hitting right click. So that is a very useful thing, beginning. Okay, so the first tree we took down was an oak tree. Now let's take our ax and let's take down a birch tree. This is a different type of tree, but generally speaking, all wood types in the game act the same. They just have a different color and different variants, so when you build with them, they can have different things. Now, I'm going to take this birch tree down, and I'm going to take a couple of these. A couple more oak logs, and I will show you guys briefly something that is not very commonly known. So, you can take a birch log, right-click it down, and you can take any kind of axe, and if you right-click on it, you take off the bark and you can still use your axe to pick that up. This goes for all wood types of any type of wood and you can still use it to create planks. So let us get this here. We will also make other tools. Let me make one more tool that is useful for farming. So you can do two sticks and two planks will give you a wooden hoe. Now you can use this, I will show you here once I grab this, but before I saw, okay, so this is a chicken in Minecraft. These chickens have a few abilities. They drop eggs just randomly, and they once you kill them, they will drop raw chicken and feathers. And they also do not take fall damage. So if they fall from high up, they will not die because they will flap and not take any damage. Okay, so let's move on here down to the water. And as you can see, there's lots of trees, so usually you have lots lots of materials to start with. And this is also a biome. Each There are different things in Minecraft, different sections. Each section has a biome called whatever the biome is called in the game. So this, I believe, is a see here, what do we got? We got a forest biome. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Okay, and now, as you can see, across the river here, you have these trees with the vines. I believe that is called a swamp biome. And there's different flowers there, too. So, let us go down here. Now we got sand right here. Sand and grass and regular dirt are the most common blocks in the game. So we can take our wooden hoe here and weaken any block that is near water 
we can right click on it and that will hold the ground into a plantable surface where we can put any type of seed. See, there we did, a seedy. Now, thing to note about water is that water will hydrate any land up to four blocks from where it is started from the source. So all four of these pieces will be hydrated eventually from this one from this water. Very useful for farming. And you can always enter it to place blocks, of course. You just hit right click. Okay. So, oh boy. So the squid there across the river is dying. Let us go take a look as to why. And it dropped an ink sack, as you would expect from a squid. Now what squid do is their AI, they swim. If they get on one of these one block high uh, sections here within the water, they will try to pathfind through and they it will end up getting on land, suffocating and dying. Now, we can always, you can, food is going to be one of your most important things in the game. If you play survival, if you play creative, it is not too much of an issue. However, food is, you always fight yourself with food. Now, any animal you kill, you can eat raw. However, it is not recommended. It is highly recommended that you cook it in a furnace. So, let us see if we can't... I think what we'll do here, just for demonstration purposes, we'll take our shovel. And you can use your shovel to break dirt blocks or gravel blocks or even sand a lot quicker than you can with your hand. Of course, in the game, tools are always most efficient. You can use your hand, but like I said earlier, some blocks cannot be mined with your hand. You can mine them, you just will not get nothing from them. Okay, so now we have some stone here. We will take our wooden pickaxe. And pickaxes can mine any kind of stone. Now there are certain ores in the game that you cannot mine with a wooden pickaxe. You need to upgrade it to stone. And I will show you here once we get some cobblestone here what you can make with cobblestone. Cobblestone is one of the recipes in the game that requires, that uses a lot of recipes in the game require cobblestone in some sort of way into the recipe. And I don't know, let's see, is this going to be enough? It should be, okay. And again, to open your inventory you hit E as default. At least that is how the game is set. And as you can see, there is the sun. So now that it is setting, you do want to get cover you either want to dig into the wall of a mountain or create a structure, even if it's out of dirt, to help protect yourself during the night. And I will show you, I will not sleep through the night because I will show you what you can and you may encounter in the night. Okay, so we just made a furnace. Now what you can do is you can take some of this oak log that you have, one in the bottom, one in the top. The bottom is your fuel source. The top is what you want to smelt. And what will happen is over here on the right, this is what will come from smelting. There, we made a piece of charcoal. So charcoal is a source of fuel. You can use that, you can put that back in here, but it can also be used to make a torch. One stick, one piece of charcoal or coal will give you four torches. Now torches are a very cheap and easy light source to come by. Now if you mine down continually, like I have been here, and you do not put light in here, it will spawn hostile mobs. Now hostile mobs will spawn within 32 blocks of you as the player. So a good deterrent for having mobs spawn is to light it up. Mobs require, hostile mobs require a light level of 12 or lower to spawn. So, now if we just hang around here, we will eventually see mobs. And let's see right there, that is a spider. Now spiders are a very unique hostile mob. During the nighttime, like it is right now, they are aggressive towards the player. 
When it becomes daytime, they will become neutral and will not attack the player. But as you can see here, it is trying to attack me. And because I'm in the water, it is not as easy. There we go. Now they drop string, but they also can drop a spider eye, which is used in brewing, which we will eventually get to. And as I've already shown you guys, the squids seem to like to kill themselves, whether intentionally or not, upon the land. Now every block will drop something within the game. Well, most blocks will drop things in the game. Not every block, as you can see. Leaves don't always drop them, but you can get them by using a pair of shears. Anyway, let's see if we can go find some hostile mobs so I can show you guys. Oh, and there's the chest that we spawned with that has stuff we could have used. Stone pickaxe, stone axe, some food. Apples are a food source. Raw salmon, which I already showed you. Bread. Sticks are handy. And other types of logs. Acacia log is a different type of tree. And you can always grab this chest and use it for storage as well early on. And I'll show you how to make that here briefly how to make a chest. It is something to store all your items which you will need because your inventory will fill up very quickly. So once again right click and you take it is going to take eight planks to make a chest and then you can right click to put your chest down and you can make a double chest with two chests like that and then you can empty whatever you'd like into the chest to save your inventory space. It is very handy to have. Now unfortunately we can't do much. Aha, there we are, skeletons. And that is one of a few ranged mobs. Oh, as long as a slime, that is right, we are near a swamp biome. Swamp biomes will spawn slimes. Now this is a bigger slime, and they will always attack the player, or try to attack the player. And they do not require a certain light level. They can spawn at any light level. And what they drop right there is slime balls. And slime balls can be crafted into slime blocks. Let's see, are we going to get enough? We are not. Oh, possibly? Nope. Okay. In order to create a slime block, you need nine. Why is that? Because if we go to the crafting table here, you need nine slime balls to make a slime block. Okay, let's go over here. I did see some more slime here. Okay, so zombies will always track the player and they will always try to attack the player. Oh, and now we're getting attacked by the skeleton. Again, one of the few ranged mobs that actually, okay, has very good accuracy. And as of 1.13, I believe, all undead hostile mobs will sink once in water. And actually, it would be nice to show you guys what will happen if we leave one of these guys alive down here. I am not going to kill him yet. We are going to watch what happens to him. I will show you. Aha, there is a creeper right there. Creepers will explode if you get too close to them. Okay, where is he? He's still down, correct? Yes. See, there we go. I caught it just in time. Now, the zombies will convert to a drown, which is another variant of the zombie hostile mob. There are a few variants of zombie hostile mobs. They all still act like zombies. They all still drop zombie flesh, which is what zombies drop. But the zombies also have a rare chance of dropping carrots and potatoes, as well as iron ingots. So no creepers, they don't have a ranged attack. However, they will explode. And exploding causes extreme damage to you, the player. Let's see here. Do we have... We will use this as of right now for fuel source to cook some food. We also have the bread that we can always eat because bread is a pre-made food, which is made with three wheat in the crafting table, like so. You hold right-click to eat, and there you eat some bread. 
skeletons drop arrows, bones, and occasionally their their uh, their bow that they use. Now we have enough slime balls to create a slime block. These can be a very fun block. I was not expecting to go over this this early in the game. So you can right click it and you can bounce on it. It can be a very fun block, but it also can be easily broken. So we're just gonna put that away. Now we will take this bone. Bones are very handy, especially early on in your game. You can take your bone, you got your four by four craft, your two by two crafting grid here. You can take your bone, put that in there and you will get bone meal. Now bone meal is used to accelerate crop growth. As you can see right there, we just grew some wheat. And it unfortunately did not drop any wheat, I do not believe, nope. But you can use it to accelerate crop growth, which can be very handy in farming. And then I did forget to mention. So let's say you have your sword and you are trying to attack something. Underneath the crosshair, you see that little bar every time I hit. Now that bar has to refill for you to do full damage to whatever you are attacking. If you do not wait for that to fill up, you will only do partial damage of what you are holding. And that is for every tool that you have. Every tool you use to attack, you need for that bar to fill up. This has been a change. In 1.8, this was not the case. You could consistently spam like so and cause damage to enemies. However, this has been changed. Okay, where did that go? Okay, we will go down here. Now, killing slimes can be fun, but also very dangerous. Because they have, they can track the player from quite some distance away. And then when they break into smaller slimes, they can still pose a threat. However, these small slimes cannot. So as you can see, slimes have three different phases, three different sizes, and can spawn at all three sizes. Only the bigger of the two can cause damage to you as the player. Okay, now again, skeletons can be dangerous early on with no armor. I was not expecting this when I first loaded up this world. So. There are many different things that you can be caught off guard early on. Okay, let us kill a creeper. Now creepers, as you can see right there, they will turn white and we just broke our tool. Now, you can still fight any enemy hostile mobs with your fists. However, it does not do as much damage. And if you are in water, it's a great example, because if you are in water, most explosions will be nullified. They will not be completely irrelevant. It's just the damage they deal is going to be extremely less. Come on, can you get up there? Now any hostile mob, not any hostile mob. Okay, so zombies and skeletons will burn as soon as the sun comes up and hits them. They are the two mobs that will burn that are probably some of the bigger threats to you during the night. Spiders can be a threat, as well as creepers. As I try to kill the spider here. Okay, more string. Now if you go swimming, I will go over that in just a second here. Let us switch out some of our tools for these stone ones we got. Okay, so in order to upgrade our tools, we can go into here. I like using the, this crafting recipe because you can just click on it, it will take the resources you have in your inventory and you can make that tool or that item, whatever it may be. So taking these is going to be so much easier. Now I don't have enough string to make a bow and arrow. We have arrows, but we do not have enough string. It takes, it takes three string to make a bow. We need food. And anything that is made of wood can be used as a fuel source. So you can use your old wooden tools once you've upgraded to use it as a fuel source to cook with. Now, there is something I can make and show you guys. Three sticks like so, and two string will give you a fishing rod. 
Now, like I showed you earlier, you can just swim in the river and kill fish if you are near any kind of source of water that produces fish. However, that's not always the easiest thing to do, but if you do get string, you can fish, and fishing is a good and easy source of food very early on until you can get better sources. So if you fish like so, and then you will have to wait, fishing can be kind of boring because it does take time to wait. Now, most tools can be enchanted with enchantments later on in the game. Now when you fish, you do have a very rare chance of catching things. See, now what we just caught here is a water bottle. This would technically be classified as a junk item. When fishing, you can fish and each thing has a different chance of you, uh, percentage chance for you to catch. So, I will catch a few more things here and see what we all get. And then you have to wait for the bubbles. It is very hard to sometimes see. But you can see these little splashes. And there you see the little bubbles like that. Bobber goes down and you catch a fish. Let's see if we can catch anything else. And again, this can be a waiting process, so it's not necessarily the most efficient, especially if you want to explore. However, it is a good source of food. And we'll just put that away for right now. And we will, oopsie daisy, let's see here. We'll use this as another fuel source. And as you can see, right above this, right above where I have all my tools or not, that is, where your tools are, this is called the hot bar where you put items. Above that is a green bar. That is your experience that you get from, um, from smelting items in a furnace, from killing mobs, and other sources of experience. You will receive XP, and you can use this XP to uh, enchant items later on in the game. And above that, you got the hearts on the left, which is your health and the drumsticks on your right, which is your hunger, which is why food is very, very important in the game, especially early on. However, that is going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed and learned something, and we will catch you in the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a lovely day. Goodbye.